And what's up, everybody? It's Monday. You know what that means. It's a brand new Plug Talk Sports episode. This is episode 25. We're getting near the 30. Uh, I can't believe we're, we're almost there at 30. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. Uh, it's just like the other day. I was um, sitting in Palm Springs, California, actually. A uh, quick story to tell you guys. I was sitting in Palm Springs, California, um, and I received a message uh, from the Lemon City guys, and they were just like, hey, you know, we've been seeing your work. We've been seeing that you, uh, you know, you've been active in the sports world and, and active on Plug Talk Sports, and we want to help you guys, you know, elevate to the next level. Mind you, this is something I started in, in 2018. Of course, you guys know the story with the Instagram page and I was doing it and I was doing podcasts by myself on, on Anchor and it was being distributed to Spotify and, and, and whatnot. Um, and pretty much f- from there, you know, I meet Stephen and Isaac at, uh, at FIU. And obviously I knew that if I wanted to uh, keep this going or I wanted to expand, I knew I was going to, I was going to need help. Uh, and I was going to need a team of people, um, to put this together and, and to make it go further. Um, and from there, uh, really, uh, from there really is, is when I, uh, decided that they needed to come on board. And that's, that's when I, uh, that's when we started doing this podcast, live and from my garage which was next best next best thing uh and that's really how how you have to start sometimes you know you got to start from there and uh we started from my garage isaac was was filming we would come to my house every week and we were filming from my garage and yeah i still remember after that it was on vacation i was in like i said palm springs california and Gus uh, from Lemon City reached out and uh, before I even responded to the message, obviously you got to talk to my guys first. I was like, hey, Isaac, Steven, you know, this is incredible. These guys we saw week in and week out at FIU games, like they want us to be part of this thing. And Isaac right away was like, why are you asking me for it? Just do it. And Steven was like, well, Steven with his chill self was like, yeah. All right, cool, cool. Yes, yeah, let's do it. And then from there, we uh, we went ahead and we did it, and here we are, episode twenty five. It's uh, it's incredible, man. It really is a it's a blessing to to come this far, and twenty five episodes is it's incredible. And I, I tell Isaac and Stephen all all the time that uh, I'm proud of them, and uh, I thank them for for helping me out and and pushing this vision. Uh, a little further and we're not done yet we got a lot of things that we're we're going to work on and we're going to try to expand as much as possible with no further doubt welcome to episode 25 there's isaac's taking shots out of uh a cup there and he's wearing a gator shirt which is jordan would love this unbelievable a gator shirt wait I, if i'm not mistaken i think we even lost this game too <laughs> um Danny, how, how do I sound? I was getting some like weird feedback earlier, so I muted myself. I sound okay. You sound perfect. You sound okay. perfect to me. Okay, cool, cool. Um, I, I'm a little late because I was making myself some coffee. That's why, uh, you know, I didn't come on a uh, nine on the dot. Had to make, you know, I have to wake up. I've been working on this uh, video log for one of my classes, and it's very tedious and stuff. And I've been in front of my screen and. You know, you can see that the the bags in my eyes are starting to develop a little bit more, but you know, bro, we, it's yeah, <laughs> man, it's you know, then that's why I give you props all the time because if you guys don't know, I, Isaac's is, Isaac's a very talented kid, man, and he's he's got a lot ahead of him, and this guy sits in front of his computer for I don't know how many hours, 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 <laughs> hours man, hours. When he and when he's not sitting in front of the computer in hours, he's spamming my phone with a bunch of Instagram stuff, which is fantastic. I love, I love reading all the stuff he sends me. You know, stuff we don't even agree on sometimes, but we still love each other. We still talk, you know, talk crap on on there, and that's hey man. We, that's why we talked a little crap, um, you know, in that New England Dallas game. 
Oh, oh Lord, this guy has the audacity to come at me when his team is one in five. They travel all the way to London, England. They get spanked by a team who hasn't even won a game yet. And he has the audacity to come at me, to come at the Cowboys, who are now five and one, by the way. Five and one. So give him a, a little, how about them Cowboys? Man, I, I just wanted to give you some, some, uh, some shtick because – uh, they had a comfortable lead in, in the fourth quarter, and New England came back, made it a game, forced it to overtime, and overtime starts. And I'm like, you know what? Let me text Danny because I know he's sweating right now. <laughs> let me, let me, you know, force the issue a little bit, uh, make him a little nervous. Uh, but yeah, shout out to the Cowboys. They started off uh, probably better than than any other uh, NFL fan would have, you know, expected. Uh, at five and one in that division, Washington is is just a dumpster fire at this point. Uh, the Eagles, we don't know where they'll be, but they're probably not a playoff team. Uh, Jalen Hurts is is doing the best that he can. Uh, New York is another dumpster fire. So <laughs> I think Dallas uh, will do good things this year in the NFC East. They they should. They really should. They shouldn't blow this this lead uh, as of yet. Second best team in the NFL right now. I mean, right behind Arizona Cardinals, who haven't lost a game. They're red hot, too. Amazing. And I thank God for Kyler Murray being my fantasy quarterback. Just got to leave that there. Um, let's let's start in the plug and shameless plug of the week. Your plug of the week, Isaac. Best thing happened past week. Lay it on me. Where is it? Well, uh, so I'll go ahead, and this is, a, a, in a sense, a rival, but it's always good to see a, a great Premier League talent ball out. And for me, it was Mohamed Salah. Mm-hmm. Um, he just, from the assists to the goals, I mean, seeing him in form play the, the way that, that he is, um, it, it's great to see as just a, any football, football uh, fan. Um, I believe uh, Liverpool beat Watford, what, 5-1? They just they destroyed them, uh, as they should, right? But um, I think that first or second pass, um, Mohamed um, Salah was, like, right there on the wing, and he just he's able to just curve that ball all the way to the other side. And I, I don't know who it was that scored the goal, but just th- that pass was so yeah. beautiful. And he's just in form, and, and I'm glad to, to see him perform. Even though, again, I'm a Manchester United fan. I shouldn't be cheering on Liverpool. But, hey, I don't have much to cheer about these days. So seeing a talent like that ball out <laughs> in the Premier League is fun. So he's my plug of the week. Hey, man, you still got Cristiano Ronaldo, so I'm not hating. Who can't do a damn thing on the wing because they won't give him the ball. Uh, man United has no... No midfield, um, no tactic, no adjustments. That's obviously from the coach. I think we need to get rid of him ASAP. Um, hey, if you can't get Cristiano Ronaldo the ball at his feet, that's a problem. Look, and, and then you look at the – so I guess we'll just talk about it. The Man United game, um, the goal that Mason Greenwood scored out of the out of the penalty box – it looks like that's what they were trying to go for every single time, whether it was Fernandez, whether it was Pogba. Whoever had the ball was trying to hit the ball out of the penalty box. Greenwood is a great young talent. He's going to hit that, you know, a couple times. But it's it's just that's not what it takes to win in the Premier League. It doesn't matter if you're you're facing Leicester City, if you're facing Watford, if you're facing whoever. You you need somebody to press forward. Um, and then it looks like this this offense, this attack is is very stagnant. Um, you have one of uh, the greatest players uh, on the planet in Cristiano Ronaldo, Bruno Fernandez. You have Pogba. You have all this attacking power, but it just seems like once they get to that lower third, they they get stagnant, and there's nobody on that attack on that midfield that can actually press forward, make that that pass. You know what I'm saying? Um, that you need to to create to to feed Ronaldo, to feed these guys on the wing. You just don't Into have the it. final third, right? Exactly. Like you, you see Luke Shaw, you know, he, he's about to make a run, but then he turns around, passes it back. Then it's like this uh, tiki tack, but it never progresses forward enough um, yeah. to win you games. Um, and the defense was just in the later half of that game, just fell asleep. They're down two goals and 
that that was 4-2 against Leicester City, who, hey, shout out to James Vardy, too. I, I don't think he gets enough credit, um, you know, for being a legend for his for his squad. So um, shout out to Leicester City. I, I, as a United fan, it's it always seems like the other United fans underestimate the teams that we play, and we shouldn't do that. And, hey, if we're doing it, imagine if the players, you know, how, how they feel. And I feel like that's what's happening is these great attacking players just seem to underestimate everyone. We don't have a coach that puts them in check. Uh, and, and Pogba said it. Something needs to change, whether it's Pogba's hair color, whether, yeah. I don't know, we come out with some nice kit next week. I don't know. Or the coach. The change, the change might be him leaving. As There's high talks of him going to Real Madrid next summer. You know, um, if if that's if that's what it takes for the management upstairs for the Glazers to uh, to realize that they need to change the coach, then so be it. You know, he's a great talent, but uh, it just it, and it you you watch Pogba play with France, and then you watch him play with United. It's night and day. It's and day. so weird. Yeah. It's so weird, and uh, it's just a lack of confidence. I think uh, also. Hey, but I promise you this: if you just give if you give Cristiano Ronaldo the ball, he will do magic for you. But at this point, he's gonna have to go get the ball himself. <laughs> exactly, but he, and he's also not gonna go from one half to the other. Um, yeah. You know, zooming past players, you know, inside and outside. He he plays on the ring, so you need to feed him the ball. And like I said, once you get to that lower third, it just seems like our attack kind of crashes in. Everybody's looking at each other. You know, nobody actually takes the initiative. Um, I was talking to a Chelsea fan, um, not not Dylan, it was someone else, uh, and they, they agree with me. We just don't have that player that takes the yes. initiative. And um, I think we need to change that coach to put these guys in check and say, hey, guys, we, we need to make these adjustments. <sighs> Well, Sorry, my rant is over. <laughs> no, 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 you're good. I love it. I love it. Uh, I can talk about I can talk about football all day if you let me. This entire show could be about football if you wanted it to be. But um, my plug of the week is gonna have to be today. Actually, me and Steven uh, went out for 18 holes. Nice. Uh, we were originally gonna go play at Redlands, and then we found out that there was some like old men league. Nothing against old men, but you know, when we try to get through 18, I mean, we enjoy it, but we're not trying to also, because playing 18 takes about four or five hours. Mm-hmm. We're not trying to make it 10 hours. We got stuff to do later on in the day. Uh, so we were like, ah, it's going to be slow out there. We're going to be waiting a lot. Uh, so we wanted to try out a new course. Um, we went to Killian Golf and Country Club over by Miami Dade College Kendall campus. We had never played there before. Loved it. Absolutely beautiful course. I, I loved it. And uh, the weather was fantastic. Let me tell you, Isaac, this morning, the weather, even right now outside, fantastic. Oh, it's not hot. There's a breeze. It was beautiful. Um, unfortunately, I lost again. Very close. 109 <laughs> to 102. Mm. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, man. And, you know, the last time, last three times me and Steven have played, it's been that close, man. It's been that close. And it's just the difference of a couple holes. And it's frustrating, but I'm getting there. Um, but that was my plug of the week. It was, it was fantastic to be out there on the course this morning, play some 18. And we had a couple of uh, Samuel Adams Oktoberfests out there on the course and nice. enjoyed them. At noon, we cracked them open. Uh, and it was nice. It was really nice out there. Uh, but we get into the bad stuff now. Uh, shameless plug. Isaac, worst thing? So worst thing, um, you know, so in our league, Danny, I was undefeated. I lost this week. No big deal. I'm 5-1, and one, okay? I won't, I won't give myself, you know, a hard time. But in my other league, I'm now two wins and three losses. Should have been 4-2. and two. Y- y- Huh? You're 4-2? and two? You should have been four and two. That's what I'm telling you. <laughs> well, look, look. So something similar happened this week where it went down to the wire. And I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to do, you know, I'm here on the on the app, on the fantasy app, and I'm doing the numbers. And I'm like, Kyler Murray threw for four touchdowns, 229. Uh, the quarterback that I was facing was Jalen Hurts, who also threw uh, for three touchdowns. 
but he had an interception and only 115 yards. Why is it that Kyler Murray only has uh, like 0.76 more than Jalen Hurts? I'm doing all the math. I'm like, what's going on? You know what happened? Dallas happened. Their defense <laughs> gave up those 29 points in the fourth quarter comeback for New England. Oh, and by the way, also, I'll just throw him in there. Mike Evans only gave me 4.7 points. So once again, shameless two, you know, two weeks in a row. My shameless plug is my fantasy team just letting me down. But Mike Evans, bro, 4.7 points. He had two receptions for 27 yards. Like, what is that? And then I was like, you know, what, what could I have done differently? So I look. Oh, Miami Dolphins. Okay. Marvin Jones Jr. I had him on my bench and he scored 23 points against our Dolphins. So, or my Dolphins. So, hey, uh, I was set, man. Jalen Waddle gave me 29 points. He balled out. They, they weren't throwing bubble screens to him anymore. And I was happy about that. <laughs> we talked about that last week. Yes. Yeah. So, that was one positive uh, from that game. <laughs> and we'll get into that a little later. Sure. Um, I'm three and three now uh, after victory this week. Again, should have been four and two. We should have been tied right now, but that's okay. Things don't always pan out the way you want it to in life. Um, my my shameless plug of the week, and I, I sad that I have to talk about it, but it is my Los Angeles Dodgers. Mm. <sighs> boy, oh boy, it was a tough last two nights. Uh. We are now down 2-0 in the NLCS. Uh, it's best out of seven, so first one who wins four. We're down 2-0. We're heading back to Los Angeles, which is a good thing. The only positive thing I'm, I'm hanging on to right now is that last year, we faced the Atlanta Braves in the same exact round, NLCS, and we also go down 2-0, and Dodgers end up winning the series and advance to the World Series. So that's, that's the hope I'm clinging on to. But... Man, the way that they've lost the last two games, they've been tied. Both teams have been tied all the way to the ninth inning. Mm. Bottom ninth, Braves walk it off. Game one, last night, tie game, all the way bottom ninth, Braves walk it off again. And I'm like, my mom was watching the game with me, and I'm just there telling her, and I, I jinxed it. I was like, I, sw- I tell my mom, I swear to you, if they walk it off again, in the bottom of the ninth, I'm going to lose my shit. I swear to you, they bring in our closer. There's two outs. First pitch, down the middle, past uh, the pitcher's mound. Corey Seager is over there. at. Uh, he's in the middle between short and second. Now, people are saying this is his fault, but it's not his fault. This ball came off the bat at 105 miles per hour. So it's coming straight at him at 105 miles per hour. He sticks his glove out and it tips his glove and it gets by him in the center field. Runner that was in second turns the corner at third, scores at home, game over. And I'm once again sitting on the couch like this. And I'm like, I'm going to go take a shower. I'm calling it a night again. I can't believe we lost again this way. And we head back to Los Angeles down 2-0 in the series. And these playoffs, we're the defending world champions right now, but these playoffs have been excruciating, at least for me, because every single one of my friends through each round have been so annoying. Let me tell you, man. We play in the wild card game against the St. Louis Cardinals. Ooh, Dodgers are going to lose. Dodgers are going to lose. Cardinal, I mean, the Cardinals lose. Dodgers get into the NLDS, play the San Francisco Giants. Oh, Giants and six. Giants and six. Giants are going to kick. Giants, they're so much better than you. They won the division. You had to play in the wild card. You're going to lose. We get by the San Francisco Giants. We make it back to the NLCS. And now the same thing. We're down 2-0. Oh, you're down 2-0. You're down 2-0. The Braves are going to take it in five or six. So it's like, it's it's annoying that every single one of my friends, they're bugging me. They're rooting for every team the Dodgers play in each round. And I'm just telling them. What what are you gonna throw at me next, man? Each round it's a different story. So we'll see, man. Shameless plug down 2-0. That's it sucks. But you know what? We'll see what happens. Anything can happen. It's the postseason. Is it I mean it's I mean that that kind of error, I guess, can happen to anybody. But like leading up to these games, is it a high scoring matchup? Like, is it the bats? Is it the pitching? 
Well, what needs to change, I guess, is what I'm asking. What needs to change? <laughs> Something. Pogba. <laughs> See, he said it. <laughs> He's a Dodgers fan. Uh, what needs to change for the Dodgers right now is that they will tie the game or they'll take the lead. What I've seen from the Braves series um, and throughout these two games, they'll take the lead and then they don't hold on to the lead or they'll lose it late. And then, and then it's over. I mean, we were winning game one, Braves came back, tied the game, and we lose the game. Last night, we were up, winning the game. They changed the pitcher, lose the game. And it's not Kenley Jansen's fault, who's our closer, and I think he's a great closer. But I don't know. I think our bullpen, I think once we get our starters, pass, pass our starters and we get into our bullpen, which, which we have a good bullpen, which is what bothers me, is that they, they seem to struggle once they get into the, to the relievers and get into the closer, which is uncharacteristic like them. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is what it is, man. And look, if it is the end of the road for the Dodgers this series, I mean, I'm not counting them out yet. It's, again, you know oh, in sports, yeah. you, you know in sports, Isaac, you know that it's not over until it's, it's over. Yep. And uh, it's 2-0 right now, and they just got to focus on the next – it's one game at a time. You just got to focus that on that now when they head back to Los Angeles and play in front of their crowd. Uh, but it is what it is. If the season ends, you know, this year, look, they're defending they, – they won the World Series last year. Uh, they hadn't won since 85. You know, I had never seen that before from the Dodgers for my team. And very thankful to be able to witness it and, and watch it last year. So – and they're not done yet. I mean, they'll they'll be back next year. This is a very talented team that's so versatile in, in all positions. So people can hate all they want. <laughs> they will. <laughs> I mean, as a as a Marlins fan, I mean, I'm you know me. I'm not rah rah. You know, I'm baseball and all that stuff. I usually just tune in when it's like the semifinals, last you know four teams, or maybe even even the the World Series. I'll tune into that. Yeah. Um, but as a Marlins fan, just please beat the Braves. Like, I'm tired of seeing them do anything positive. Like, <laughs> trying, man, trying. We did last year. We beat them last year. But, I mean, they don't even have Acuna right now. And, I mean, they got some talented players over there. They have D- uh, Dansby Swanson. And it is with this 2 0, bro. We'll move on. All right. <laughs> We're going to talk about something you like, though. Sure. Oh, man. Leon Edwards, Jorge Masvidal coming up. I think that's, believe that's December 11th. You and I, I don't yes. care what you're doing. I, I don't care. Let's we do are it. going out. We are going out to go watch that fight. We're going to go to sports grill or something, eat some good food, uh, have some drinks or whatever, and we're going to watch this fight. I'll, I'll tell you where we won't go, and it's pizza and beer. Thank you, Mom. I have some mail. Uh, I, I don't know. Oh, Amazon. Okay. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we will not go to pizza and beer in Wynwood. Um, I hope you know people are tuning in and 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 they're they're wondering places to go for these UFC. Don't go there. The pizza is great. The beer is great, but don't go there for a UFC fight because they'll be blaring Bad Bunny and you know just you know all, all the the top fifty music leading up to that final fight. So you're trying to watch the card, trying to hear Joe Rogan, you know, and and, and um, uh, DC and, and the the commentary, but you won't, you won't be able to because you, you got, be, yeah, you got Olivia you Rodrigo uh, blasting in the background. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man, Demi Lovato, whatever you want to, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and it was so annoying. Like, um, it got to the. Oh, okay. So it was Brian Ortega. I'm trying to remember. Yeah. Brian Ortega and Volkanovsky. That was the last fight that I saw. Yeah. yeah. And we get there to like the fifth. No, it was uh, like the fourth round. And then they finally kicked in with the, the commentary. I was like, are you kidding me? This late into the fight, we can actually hear DC, you know, and all these guys, uh, you know, doing their commentary. And then finally, they go into the fifth round, whatever. The fight goes to decision. It goes to decision. The referee, you know, they have the referee in the middle, the two fighters here. You know, they're about to raise the the winner's hand. 
boom, back to the music. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> you spare me, you know, and still, you know, like that moment that, oh, wow, you know, this person or that person wow. won. They robbed no, Isaac his dreams. Just robbed me from that feeling, that and still moment. Uh, I'm not a huge Volkanovski fan, you know, more like Max Holloway. But still, you know, hearing that the champion, the and still, like that should be a, like a signature, whether you're watching boxing, you're watching I, anything. You know, I, I, this is weird that I've never asked you this question. And we've talked about all of this stuff a lot on the yeah. show and off air. But I've never asked you the question. What? Who is your favorite UFC fighter? I can't believe I've never asked you this. So, okay. So, you know, um, well, we, I don't, yeah, but we haven't had this, this conversation. Um, we haven't, which is weird. But one of my friends is a huge John Jones, you know, and, and there's a reason why I'm bringing this up. So huge John Jones fan. He, he thinks he's the GOAT. And my criticism was always, well, I can't consider somebody just with as bad of a person that he is outside the cage. I just can't consider him the GOAT, right? Yeah, my guy was always Chuck Liddell, <laughs> and okay. I remember paying attention. But he got involved in something like that. I don't know if it was his girlfriend or his wife. I, I didn't really read the story too much, but it was domestic violence. Something went down at his house. The cops came, arrested him. The whole deal, the whole enchilada, you know. The whole and he was, yeah, right. And then, um, you know, apparently the story is not as bad as John Jones. I mean, in in that story, you hear that it was the kids you know, his own kids calling the cops and that his, his wife had, you know, didn't want to go back to the hotel room. And, you know, and this guy, John Jones head butted like a police car. I mean, this, that's a horrible story. So again, not quote unquote, it's not as bad as that, but yeah, Chuck Liddell to answer your question, you know, but unfortunately he got involved into that. So now I'm going to eat my words and you know, we can talk about top five and you can add John Jones and I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to be a hypocrite. <laughs> but but Chuck Liddell, Chuck Liddell, the Iceman okay. Liddell, that's, um, I would say, my favorite. And then second favorite, um, George St. Pierre, who. OK, I was very respectable, too. Yeah, man. Pure martial artist right there. Uh, and and um, I saw on my Explorer on Instagram earlier this week. It was so funny. It was um, it, the the caption said Joe Rogan teaches MMA fighter like um, kicking techniques, right? And I was like, what do you mean, Joe Rogan teaching an MMA fighter? Like Joe Rogan's never competed, you know, in the UFC or MMA like that. And I look, and it's uh, it was George St. Pierre and and Joe Rogan training together. And oh, this man. this video is like from like 2005. Like it's old. But as Joe Rogan, like basically going over the technique of like the spinning back kick and he's telling George like, hey, when you do the spinning back kick, you kind of do, you know, you kind of kick your leg at an angle. What I need you to do is kick it straight because you, you can um, cause more damage, have more of an impact when you kind of like kick your leg straight rather that, you know, than in a, in a, at an angle. So, uh, but anyway, yeah, I, I don't want to go on a huge rant here, but uh, George St. Pierre, Chuck Liddell, um, those are t two of my favorite all time. I want to, I want to, I want to reverse topics here. We'll get into the Masvidal, Leon Edwards fight, but now they're talking about Chuck Liddell and you mentioned and John Jones, uh, Conor McGregor, who is my favorite fighter, uh, seems to have. Well, after the altercation he had with Machine Gun Kelly on, I don't even know what award, AMA, and that wasn't even AMAs, it was MTV Music, some award show, I don't know what it was. BMAs or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. BMAs. Yeah, BMAs. <laughs> um, apparently, he was, he's been in Italy. Uh, great picture, I saw him and Jose Borinho, the coach of AS Roma, <laughs> together. Those two going together, man, it's crazy. They're giving him Perdope number 12, Irish whiskey. Um Apparently, Conor McGregor in a club, he was with his fiance, punches a famous DJ in the face for no apparent reason. And now the DJ is suing Conor McGregor. I have some video of, like, I mean, let me show you guys. Oh, not video of the altercation, but uh, the DJ had, like, um, shared, I think, on his Instagram or his Twitter. Let me just find it. 
he was like, can't this is talk not, But this is not the first time, though. I don't know if you remember a couple of years back here in Miami. Well, let's see this. Oh, man. Yeah, like, he's got a top lip, lower lip, his nose. Um, yeah, so, it, you know, and he's talking, he's talking Italian. I, I mean, speaking Italian, I can't translate it for my people out there, but <laughs> it's, it's just unfortunate. Well, what do you think? What do you think, Danny? What do you make of it? Honestly, so he's had a history with this a couple of years ago. I think it was even like on New Year's Eve down here in Miami. I think he was at the Fountain Blue even. Some fan tried to take a picture with him, yeah. grabbed the rest of the phone out of his hand, just smashed it on the floor. Mm-hmm. Um, and now we have, you know, the Machine Gun Kelly incident. We Obviously, we all know about the Khabib incident. And now we have this incident with, with this DJ – uh, which he was punched for no apparent reason. Look, yeah. he's either had to be on some sort of drug or whatever. Because you just don't punch someone straight in the face for no reason. Either on drug or he's intoxicated. Either one of the two. And it's sad because, look, he's, he, we obviously know what he's done for you at the UFC and the pedestal he's put the UFC in and helping the sport grow and whatnot. And it just sucks, man. It, you just you got to stay out of trouble and – you know, I, for the standpoint of, of people who are in the mixed martial arts, a lot of people look up to him, you know, and uh, he's got to, you know, that's something I personally think about every day is, you know, when you make decisions, you got to think about, you know, if I if I make this decision, how is that going to impact or affect the people around you that look up to you? Yeah. And I know it's a lot to put on your shoulders because nobody's perfect and we're human and we will make mistakes, but that's something you got to think about is, you know, imagine a kid. And I remember I, we all have had, you know, people that we look up to that have made mistakes and let us down in some sort of way. And when you were a kid, that broke you, man. You're like, you would sit there and be like, wow, I can't believe this person did that. Or they're actually into that. I feel let down. And that's the feeling that you don't, you know, you want to give people or, it's, or especially kids or people that look up to you. You don't want to give them that. Um, but I think, like I told you the other night, Isaac, we were texting. I think that his recent, you know, time in the UFC and, and losing, I think it's gotten to him. I think it's it's gotten to his head mentally and, and personally. And I think it's affected him, even though he says no. But it's it's affected him because he came from this Mayweather fight on top of his game. Comes fights, Khabib loses. And the only win he has against Cowboy Cerrone and he's not – it's something that he's not used to. He's not used to being at the bottom right now. And he's in uncharted waters, uncharted territory. He doesn't doesn't know what this feels like. And he's just – I think it's gotten to his head. I think he's gotten mental with it. Um, and that's that's all I have. And especially, uh, we all must remember the profession he, he's in. He's a mixed martial artist. And he, yeah. has, said it, he has said it in interviews before. I am no celebrity. I I legit bounce heads off the canvas for a living and take my money and run. So we can't just sit here and think about, oh, he's a celebrity. Yeah, in a way he is, but he beats people up for a living. Yeah, I think, um, you know, after that Mayweather fight, it's like it proved that he's bigger, like his brand, right? He's still a human being at the end of the day, but his brand is bigger than the UFC mm-hmm. and almost – bigger than life right like like, you know that saying larger than life and i think it's gotten to the point where it's gotten so much to his head that it's like he feels maybe so powerful that maybe he can get or he thinks that he can get away with anything at this point um and you hear these stories and you wonder well you know or you see his instagram stories and he's with his mom he's with his you know with d uh he's with the kids and it's it's hard for me to wrap my head around that he's around his family and he's still acting so erratic. Yeah. And uh, it just seems to be like, yeah, that he's just he's really mentally unstable. And he's to, he needs to, like, almost remind people that, yeah, you know, I got these hands. <laughs> and it's like, in all reality, we, you're you're Conor McGregor, like. Your your brand itself is is so big. You don't need to remind people, but it's you know I feel like his ego is, is fractured. His ego mm-hmm. is fractured, and he doesn't know how to cope with that. 
Um, yeah, and there is such thing as, believe it or not, there is such thing as sports therapy. There is therapists mm-hmm. that are specifically for athletes to help them cope and deal with all these sorts of things. With yeah. performance anxiety, there's such thing as performance anxiety. I, I know there's a uh, uh, the last Winter Olympics. Uh, I believe her name is I don't want to botch it. Her name is Michelle. I think Michelle Schif- Schifrin. She's a uh, skier for Team USA, and she mm-hmm. suffers from performance anxiety. Mm-hmm. And she sees a sports therapist for that. And it's it's a real thing. But you know, when you see this erratic behavior. It, it's definitely something it's, he's mentally he's mentally not there at, at the moment and like you said and I think we see it from a lot of athletes that become big time now is that and not all of them because we have a LeBron James or even back then we have a Michael Jordan where their brand is larger than the game but they still got it together but then we see people like an Odell Beckham Jr. or even a Conor McGregor. Yeah, yeah, Dennis Rodman, where they become so famous because they're so good at their game that their brand becomes more than the game. And then it's just about all the outside stuff of, like, commercials. I'm starting this brand. I'm getting this deal. And it's not about the game anymore. Um, so what got them there? So he can re- he can retire from UFC right now, and he's got a million he's other fine. projects going on, and he'll be fine. Yeah, he'll be um, fine. But that's that's just the end of it. I, I think that he is suffering, like you said. He's suffering. He's hit rock bottom from these losses, and he doesn't know how to cope with that because he's never been there. He, you know, he's been used to like I'm on the rise, I'm on top right now, and I think he's struggling to realize or, or struggling to cope with that. Maybe the UFC has moved on. The UFC, everyone has caught up to him. Everyone is now you know caught up to his game or know how to fight him. And he's struggling to cope with how did this happen? You know, how did I just miss out, go for one boxing match? I come back and everything is gone. So I think that's what he's personally struggling with. Yeah, I have to agree, Danny. And I I mean, uh, you know, maybe it'll take a a sports therapist, you know, somebody with with, uh, some real pedigree and experience to deal with that because – I don't. I don't have the answers. <laughs> I don't have the answers, Sway. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I don't have the answers, Sway. <laughs> yeah, and, and and we can even talk about Kanye. I mean, I know we're we're on the topic the topic of McGregor, and, and thank God, I guess Kanye maybe he has the people around him that he doesn't go out punching people in the face. But we've seen him doing interviews, and we've seen him just really. You just doing really erratic things or or using or saying, remember, he was having that mental breakdown where he was going live almost every other day on Instagram and stuff and going on these rants. And he was he was on I forgot the name of the medication, but he was on on pills. And you and I, people watching that, we we don't know that, you know, we don't know what happens behind the scenes. Uh, Now, anyway, yeah, I, I will tell you. The reason why people always say, why do you like Conor McGregor? Like, or why do you like Kanye? Because coming from a person who's on medication himself and, and deals with anxiety and, and depression and whatnot, and I, I'm writing a book. As, as I haven't told anybody this, but I'm writing a book about mental health and my story with mental health and helping people to cope with that. So that's this is the first time I've announced it, and I'm on chapter four right now. It takes a lot of time writing. Hopefully it will be out by spring in 2022. Um, but the reason why I like people like that is because they deal with that sort of thing that I deal with. Obviously for me, I don't lash out on people like that. Uh, thankfully, I, 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 have, I don't have that issue. Um, but I I like, I like them because they use that ability with their mental health kind of as a superpower in a way. Mm. And that superpower helps them, believe it or not, anxiety and depression, it can help you because your mind's just all over the place. Obviously with a million thoughts racing through your mind at a million miles per hour, it can help you come up with some very genius ideas and very creative stuff, believe it or not. And the reason why I like people like that is because they use that. um, Obviously it's not a talent. I mean, obviously these people are talented, but this disorder 
which it's not, obviously I don't wish it upon anybody, but they use it to come up with creative ideas and bring through that, bring good into the world. And I'm inspired by that because if you can have struggle from something like that and still use that as a fuel to put good stuff, creative ideas out into the world, I think that's just, I think that's amazing. At least yeah, for me personally. We, we've seen um, we a good example of that. Uh, people who we consider awkward or we consider like, well, you know, he, he doesn't really say things, you know, off the tongue very well. Like, like for example, an Elon Musk, if yeah. you watch his, his interview uh, with Joe Rogan, he'll start with one idea and he offers so many solutions to all these different issues. And his brain is just firing on all cylinders that you get lost in his words. Yeah. Uh, and you say, well, this guy, I mean, just he's, he's a bright mind, but he doesn't know how to express it, you know? So it's like these people that get so hyper fixated and going back to Kanye in his interview with Joe Rogan, uh, where he, he gives you like three or four, whether it's um, he talks about, um, I forgot what the, what the word is, but it's like where you're able to manip like it's almost like farming. I think it's called terraforming or terraforming. And, and you're able to like re you know, get, get the, the soil uh, to the right degree where you're able to, you know, make certain foods. And, and he has so many, like I just, that's just one example, but he'll, he'll start talking about that and then start going into his clothing brand, start going into, you know, these other different gadgets and, and stuff that ultimately will make him money. <laughs> it's, it's not yeah. good ourselves, but it'll offer some kind of solution, but it's like so much at once that it's like, it's almost a blur listening to this guy talk. Um, but it's, it's good because he's got so many ideas and, and Hey, if we have more people with more ideas, I mean, we could have a better tomorrow, but of course, you know, anxiety is a real issue and it's, it's not a talent. And so it, it is something that if you do not, um, it has its pros and cons, right? If, and if you do not keep it under control, I mean, it could be horrible not just inside but outside as well and you like i said you know what we're talking about conor mcgregor and just how people have that energy inside them and they don't know how to release it the right way these things happen um look for me and a lot of people will be surprised but a, a lot of people which is true i am a very easygoing person i'm a very chill person relaxed calm person um but for me, my anxiety, you know, I get frustrated, I get mad, I get angry sometimes, and which is people will probably be, be surprised because there's a lot of people who have never seen me angry and they're like, I can never imagine you being angry. And I, behind closed doors, I, I get angry. And sometimes I lash out at people I shouldn't lash out to um, just because, and not for any specific reason, it's just because I feel frustrated, anxious at the moment, and it happens. But the way I, I, you know, I channel that is by, you know, plug talk sports, my work, d diving into my work, playing soccer, playing golf with Steven, going to the gym. That's how I, I channel out that stress. Um, it's all about finding, you know, what's a good coping strategy for you. And that's stuff that I'll be talking about in the book too. I'm excited. I'm excited to hear it, man. Yeah. You'll yeah. be helping a lot of people for sure. Yeah. So uh, look, we'll get back into sports because <laughs> you, you and I know, bro, that like, honestly, Isaac and I can have our own separate show really now about sports, just about worldly things. And it'd be one hell of a show. Well, Me and Isaac can go on for like two, three hours talking about we, we can talk about – me and I can literally go back and forth for three hours talking about if water is wet. <laughs> like literally. You know who I have to blame for this? You know, because we've been at it for 45 minutes. I, I blame Steven for this because he's not the guy to, you know, to like, you know, when the, the referee comes in and separates the boxers, like, all right, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's you know, Steven. Steven's a liar. Steven said, <laughs> Steven said the night that he was doing some midterm project or whatever. And I was like, oh, cool, whatever, that's fine. 
But then I come to realize that it's the ALCS and his Boston Red Sox are playing on right now. <laughs> so that man that's is probably – he's pro- Yeah, that's his midterm project. He's probably sitting at home in his jammies and his little Boston Fenway Park Red Sox jammy pants on, and he's watching the Red Sox on TV. Shout out to Steven. We still love you, and don't worry, I'll kick your ass in 18 holes and coming soon at some point. But, <laughs> yeah. He's not helping us out tonight, separating us, us into uh, no. into our topics. But hey, look, even if it is a sports show, we hope you guys like our conversations. I mean, me and Isaac, even though you may not agree with us, we have some insight. I think me and Isaac have some pretty insightful conversation. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. I mean, Steven would be like, yes, I agree, but he's not here. <laughs> and trust me, look, yeah. Isaac's, Isaac's like a brother to me. And sometimes I want to put the boxing gloves on and I want to deck him in the face some, through some conversations. I mean, hell, I almost got blocked from Instagram. And I, Isaac's like, I'm going to block you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, then, and going back to the whole subject on like anxiety and all that, I mean, wasn't it, I think, a few weeks ago, I think you were, t- you were trying to get my attention on Plug Talk and, and different ideas. And, you know, you, you're trying to get the chat going with – with um, a meet, I'm not going to reveal too much, but some some things that we're trying to work on uh, uh-huh. for the podcast and for the show and, and, and our product, right? And you're hitting me up with all this stuff, but in my head, I am like having like this breakdown because of school. And I remember I lashed out at you, and we had a whole deal, we had a whole conversation about that. Uh, but see, I, I didn't even realize it in the moment, but that's what it was. It was like, that anxiety, that energy, that that I was just like, Danny, I just can't right now. <laughs> Which is exactly what we were just talking about because I know myself too. I know when I start, when I'm in, in my time where I'm brainstorming, when I come out with an idea and then it leads to another one and it leads to another one and it leads to another one, I start telling Isaac or Steven like, guys, why don't we do this? Why don't we do this? Or we can do that. Or we can do this. We can definitely do that. And I just start coming out with ideas and it's just coming out of my mind. So I, I get him, but you know what? I uh, I heard a message at my church this past weekend that it relates to this situation. A true friend is somebody who is going to challenge you and is going to put you into your place when you need to be put into your place. Obviously, they will always love you and be there for you, but most importantly, you know, challenge you. Yeah, so you can put me in that place that day for sure. If, if I wasn't a true friend, bro, like – I wouldn't have challenged you and, and vice versa. You challenge me all the time too. And Steven and, and we all three of us all challenge each other, but that's what true friendships are. So, by the way, and I wanted to just mention the dolphins cause you, you just reminded me of the challenge game, uh, the whole challenge stuff. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have to talk about it. So, Let's talk about it. so th- th- at one point in the game and mind you, I'm at Denny's. I'm not at home watching the game. I'm at Denny's, you know, the, the, the sound on the TV is off. I'm just looking, you know, waiting for my food, watching the game. And I remember at one point there was like a first, no, it was, uh, it was Miles Gaskin. I don't know if you remember this, this play, but Miles Gas- Gaskin caught the football for a first down, but then he kind of bobbled it towards the end and they weren't yes. sure. And it was the yes. most confusing thing to watch because again, I, I don't, I can't hear the commentary. I don't know what's going on, but I see Urban Meyer taking out the red, you know, uh, the challenge flag, right? Yeah. Like talking to the refs. Then I see Brian Flores taking it out as well. And I'm like, you can't challenge a challenge. What is going on? And then at the bottom of the screen, it was a lower third that said booth review. And I was like, we're not inside two minutes. I was just so confused. You know, so the, the word challenge just like triggered that memory. A, a challenging, a challenge that was a challenge. Like, that was just like, what? <laughs> Honestly, I set my alarm for 9 a.m. yesterday. I woke up, I was watching the game. Low key, I was like, kind of like, I was, I was watching it from my room here in bed, and I was kind of like this. Like, it was, it was early. I went to bed late. I was kind of like watching it with one eye. I was like, what? And then obviously, once things started going downhill, I'm not going to lie, halftime came around, took a little snooze. Woke up when halftime was over, had some breakfast, continued watching the game. And all I got to say is for Dolphins fans in the city of Miami, man, we really, first of all, 
to our friends across the pond, and we all know that Americans and, and Brits, it's our closest ally. Uh, God bless them. God save the queen, as they say. Um, man, they couldn't have picked a better matchup to send them. Like, I was telling you over voice note, like, they give us our best. They send us, like, Manchester United. They send us our best Premier League teams over here that come tour the United States. Yes. And we give them the Dolphins and Jaguars. Like, And wow. then, like, the week before was Jets and Falcons. I was just like, this is this is insane. And then, like, I think it was the Jaguars, like, two-minute offense or whatever. They're trying to get closer to – I think it was, like, a big third down play. What happens? false start, you know, five yard pen. I was just like, th- neither team wanted to win that game, you know? <laughs> Look, and I can guarantee you, I'm sure there was some Brits in that stadium, but I guarantee you a lot of them were people were like from Miami that booked tickets to fly to London or yeah. like, I don't know, people from Jacksonville that booked tickets to fly to London to watch the game and have a cool experience, visit London, see a football game at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Yeah. And uh, the only thing that came out positive there for me was Jalen Waddle grabbing 29 points. But yeah, how, how do you think about – what did you think about Tua? How do you think about his performance? Um, I mean, could it, it things could always be better. Um, there's a lot of our own fans, Dolphin fans, who – you know, and I always look through the comments. And, and I, last night – I know I sent you some memes, you know. <laughs> you did. just lost to the twerk team. <laughs> um, I was so I was on Twitter and I was on Instagram reading comments, and a lot of people are going for Tua's head trade for Watson. I'm I'm not there yet. I'll be honest, I'm not there yet. But I do understand the frustration. You know, uh, earlier in the game, there was a, a moment. I think it, I say earlier, but I think it was about like the third quarter where Tua, it looks like he's going to go for a run. And it looks like, you know, he just hesitated or I don't know what went through his mind, but he said, you know, in his mind, he's like, I'm not going to run. I'm going to pass it. So what does he do? He overthrows the person he's trying to pass on a, on a big um, second down or third down play. And it's like this indecisiveness that like he has, And I know having two offensive coordinators and just as terrible as an offensive line or offense in general, minus uh, Jalen Waddle, is I just don't get that. I don't get those those plays where he just doesn't seem to have the confidence to, you know, to make the read, make that play that you see Josh Allen go out and make or or I hate to say it, but Herbert. Uh, go out. That, that was my next question, bro. Yeah. My next question was gonna be, do you now regret taking Tua over Justin Herbert? So, initially, you know, and I've had that question asked a lot <laughs> by Dolphin fans and and just g- general people. But um, <sighs> it's kind of hypocritical, man, because like everyone now is like, we should have taken Justin Herbert, blah blah blah. But back then. Yeah. Everyone was praying to a Tiger Valoa as the next coming of Christ. Um, it's like yes and no because, look, it, it, let's say weeks back, Tua makes the correct read, the, the you know, the correct protection read. He, he reads the linebacker that, that went in to try to sack him. He adjusts the line. You know, does all that pre-snap work that we do not see him do. He, he's not injured, and maybe we have a better chance. Maybe we're not one and five, you know, we're two and three or whatever, right? Uh, because Brissett was was horrible. I mean, let's just be honest. That was one of the worst quarterback, uh, some of the worst quarterback plays. I remember, I think it, it was like that game back in the day where like Tannehill got in hurt, Henny come, Chad Henny comes in, he gets hurt. Uh, then Tyler Thigpen came in. And then won us the game. And then the week after, we had to play the Baltimore Ravens on, like, Thursday night or, like, Monday night. And we got destroyed, like, 40 to nothing. Like, Tyler Thigpen, that's how bad, like, Brissett was. It reminded me of Tyler Thigpen. Um, But anyway, so do I regret that? Um, I'm going to say no because we we don't know. Maybe we do pick Herbert. But as the Dolphins, as just lowly and unlucky as we are, he gets cracked too. He gets his ribs messed up, and and we lose you know, him for a couple games. 
And then two was balling out in, in, in San Diego. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Los Angeles. Yeah. So there's just no telling. Um, do I regret it? No. Um, it is what it is at this point. But and I, and I think our problems are just bigger than Tua. You know, I think our, our we have so many problems. Our defense is really one of the worst in the league. I mean, how do you go from last year to this year? Uh, how do you regress like that? It just that that boggles my mind. You look at some of the moves. I think they get they let go of Shaq Lawson. They let go of some uh, some of their best players, Van Noy, Kyle Van Noy. Um, you know, maybe that's what it is. Just not having those veterans. Um, on the defensive line and on, on, on the linebacking core, um, not having Xavier Howard or Byron Jones. I mean, of course that doesn't help you. Uh, I'm going to screw up his name. Iganab- I can't say his number eight. Yeah. Yeah. Iganab- yeah. <laughs> He's not it. He's not it. After this season, I don't want to see him ever again. Um, you know, so yeah. to answer your question, I did send you some some very funny memes. There's two of them I, I remember off the top of my head I sent you. There's one that said it was the Dolphins logo. It says, this team makes me drink. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it does. And, and you know, Danny, I'm, I'm on Sober October, so I haven't yeah. been drinking. I haven't been, yeah. you know, doing anything. So uh, I've been I've been a good boy this this October, and I, and I tend to um, to complete my mission. But they're making it very difficult. <laughs> And let me tell you, there's another one I sent you that it was hilarious. It was like the Dolphins offensive coordinators getting together at halftime. It was like the whole Pentagon. Was war war. Movie, like the Pentagon, like Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, God. Yeah. And I also wanted to just shout out, you know, the Florida Gators. We're going through it, too. Uh, Jordan, you know, if, if you're watching, say what's up. You know, uh, just Emory Jones is just horrible. Uh, I, I, I've never liked him, and I'm glad that he got benched last game against LSU. We had no business losing that game the way that we did. Richardson, he seems to be that guy. He led four, if I'm not mistaken, three or four uh, touchdown drives right after, you know, just coming into the game. So give me Richardson the rest of the season. Um, but going back to the Dolphins, I think – if they if they remain the way that they are and they they lose the the rest of the games and they don't win more than five games, I really think they should let go of Flores. I'm I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Angrier. Hot take. Um, hot take. There's a hot take alert. Yeah, I mean, look, Flores is not like you know he wasn't hired for offense. He was hired for defense, and the defense has regressed. Very much so. The players that I would I would give it to to Jalen Phillips. He's been a bright spot. He's been good, you know, coming out of University of Miami, playing linebacker for us. He's been good. He's been pretty decent. Um, we, we've had some bright spots, but just overall, the defense has regressed from going from an almost playoff team to now. Like we can't hit the quarterback. We can't turn the ball over. Um, we get run on like crazy. I have. Um, What's his name? Uh, the running back for um, for the Jacksonville Jaguars. He gave me some points uh, yeah. this weekend, um, and I knew I knew I knew it. Like I had um, I had somebody else. I can't remember the, uh, off the top of their name, but I was like, I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna think about it. I'm starting that Jaguars running back. It's a hot take alert. Hey. It's a hot take alert. Clean house, clean house. Isaac clean Gomez house. is staying right here. Hot take alert, Isaac we Gomez. That. And we need that here on uh, Unplugged. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Isaac Gomez is saying, yeah. Limpia la casa. Yeah, Limpia la casa, clean house. The Dolphins don't win any more than five games this season. I mean, we got, what, one one or two extra games this year to make a difference, um, which that, that was something I disagreed with. I mean, way to put your players in more opportunities to get injured. But, uh, hey, man. Yeah, fire everybody. That's how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, and tell me, there's just—I don't even want to talk about uh, where it was this way. Yeah, not him over there next to it. Don't want to talk about it. I don't even know how they even have. I, I don't even want to know how they even have a football team still, a football program. I, we, that's that's conversation for 
another day. UCF also lost to Cincinnati too. UCF is always uh, the talk of the town in Orlando, but <laughs> let's let's end with our trivia question. I want to see if you can get this. Sure. Can you name all the Olympic players that represented the Miami Heat that each have banners at the top of the FTX arena? Mm, okay. Chris Bosch. Nope. Um, he's, he doesn't have an Olympic jersey up there? Nope. Um, Tim Hardaway? Yes. Okay. I got one. D. Wade? Yes. Um, LeBron James? Yes. You're missing one more. Glenn Rice? Nope. Okay. I'll give you a hint, though. Okay. I'll give you a hint. This man, the one person you're missing, also has his jersey retired. Um, was it Alonzo Morning? Yeah. All right. LeBron. You know, I met him Alonzo Morning um, twice. Twice I, I met him. Uh, first time, it was actually my first job at Corey's Restaurant. Um, the owner of the restaurant, his brother owned like a uh, – what is it called? Like a like a laundry place, like yeah. um, whatever. Like like, get, not, yeah. not laundry, but you get your clothes like pressed and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I know. It is a laundry place, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. So um, his – I forgot out the reason why, but – his clothes was there at the restaurant instead of the, the actual place. I guess his brother stopped by and dropped it off. So I'm working, you know, my, my suit and tie at this really nice restaurant. I'm, I'm a bus boy and Alonzo morning walks in, you know, and he's like, Hey, can I talk to so-and-so? And I'm like, well, you know, he's not here, but um, <laughs> how can I help you? <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, whatever, I called my manager and she knew exactly – I didn't know I didn't know if he was there to eat. I didn't know what was going on. I was just like, yo, Alonzo Morning just walked in. Like, I'm like <laughs> – Now, what year was this? Oh, man, this is um, – I want to say like 2014. 2014, yeah, a couple of years ago, man. You might have instigated – What? Alonzo Morning trying to talk to get LeBron to stay in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> I he was all ice and snow. I might have. Um, and then the second time was my the the job that um, I had earlier this year, which uh, it was Lee Field Scolaro, private attorney's office. You know, personal injury. If you guys need any personal injury help, <laughs> down no, in I guess the <laughs> um, they had like a basketball tournament in Overtown, and I went over there and and I took a picture with him. And unfortunately, I don't have the picture on me, but um, that was cool. That was, picture that was cool. didn't happen. Yeah, I, I had it on my desktop and my work computer, but I don't, unfortunately, I don't have my work computer on me. Well, guys, I know that this episode was a little bit less on the sports side, but sometimes things are bigger. And I know this is weird coming from me, but things are bigger than sports sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to have, and you never know who's watching, Um it's nice to have different conversations. Obviously, me and Isaac are two people who we can go on for hours about different sorts of conversations. Like I told you that like we can talk about like if the water is wet for like three hours. But, you know, we hope you guys enjoyed this episode with just me and Isaac today. Um, we appreciate you guys as always, you know, 25 episodes in. We appreciate you guys as always you know, tuning in every Monday night and uh, showing us love and support. Uh, so thank you very much. We appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you next Monday for, for a new episode. Limpia la casa. Limpia la casa. Hot take alert. Woo! Good night, everybody. Good night.